One home completely destroyed as well as an adjoining RV. What caused that fire, we do not know. Two other homes were burned as well and received damage. So right now, crews are working on trying to put out any remaining hotspots, assessing the damage, trying to figure out what exactly happened. The call came, but the love is already pouring in for Governor Bashir. While we were doing our seven o'clock hit a little while ago, it's a woman came by dropping 17,000 rose petals out front of the governor's mansion here, showing that she wanted to show Andy Bashir and his family that they are loved by Kentuckians and they are excited for four more years. Regardless of what holiday you're shopping for this holiday season, there is a lot of pressure, especially on parents, to create core memories for their kids. But if you plan accordingly, things will be a lot more manageable. Been out there all morning. How's the excitement level looking like as we're getting closer to post time? Have you noticed anybody tailgating or anything? You know, I haven't seen anyone tailgating yet, but maybe there's someone walking around with an Irish coffee or two, but you could feel the buzz. People just love this place each and every year. This is, I think, the best Lexington has to offer from a sporting standpoint, and I know we have UK football and UK basketball, but I think there's just something different about Keeneland, and you're going to feel it the next 17 days. I can't wait to bring my parents and sister out here for the first time next week. Raising awareness for veteran and first responder mental health. That's what John and Corey Preston and others are doing as they continue their hike from South Carolina to Cincinnati. Tyler Melito has their story as they stopped in Lexington. 22. That's the number of roughly how many of our nation's heroes take their own life each and every day. It's also the number of miles a day John and Corey Preston have hiked for the last several months. I'm trying to stop suicide. That's what it is. I, I, there, awareness isn't a word for me anymore. You know, awareness is happening. Awareness is something that, that is spreading out across the, the whole country. John Preston served in the United States Marine Corps. He's seen the effects PTSD can have on a veteran, losing his brother to suicide in 2016. And he doesn't want anyone else to suffer through what he has. I'm not out here walking because I'm healthy. You know, I'm not out here doing this because my mind's okay. I'm out here doing this because I know there's a lot of people like me that suffer with post-traumatic stress that deal with these things, and I'm out here walking for all of us. Preston's wife, Corey, has been by his side the entire way. As a former first responder herself, she has advice for other military spouses when helping their loved ones. The first time that you ask your spouse or your loved one if they're okay, they're probably going to say yes. Knowing them well enough, you'll be able to see that that's not the case, and it's a matter of pursuing in a in a gentle and understanding way. Along the way, the Prestons have met other first responders, veterans, and active military members, like on Friday at Lexington Fire Department, Station 10. Understand that then there's a time that it seems dark or it seems wrong or it seems like we can't do it. You have to put your head down and you have to move like we have. And some, like James Murphy, decided to help and walk with them, saying he knows the struggle firsthand. The everyday, what we're going through, what you know, they've gone through in, in and out of the military. Um, it's, it's somebody needs help. Everybody needs help sometimes. So. In Lexington, Tyler Melito, Fox 56 News. Countdown to Christmas has reached its final 10 days. With that, people will be ordering their gifts from all over the country and quite likely on Amazon. Tyler Melito joins me in studio to share what a day in the life is like for Amazon's delivery drivers. There are thousands of people and robots involved in the process of getting your order on Amazon to your door the moment after you click buy. But it is the men and women who are behind the wheel like Gina Vance who get it down the home stretch. The day starts dark and early for Amazon delivery drivers like Gina Vance. We met her right before 8 a.m. where she was already hard at work. A short time later, the excitement really ramps up. So we get here at 9, we're on the pad by 9.30, 9.35, and we're out on the road before 10. And once they get on the loading pad, it is a mad sprint to get every truck ready to go to hit the road. But it isn't every person for themselves. We all work as a team, so it's not as bad as people would make it seem because when one person gets done loading their truck, they normally go help someone else. So it, it makes it easier as we work as a team. The teamwork, along with being prepared, is all the more important during the holiday rush. It is our busy season, but we do prep all year round for this. Like We know that we are going to hit our busy season after Thanksgiving. So during the year, we average routes to try to make sure that we're balancing for peak. 
Amid the craziness a day could bring for vans, from the weather to having to carry really large packages and much, much more, there are several moments that make it all worth it. I have a lot of uh, regular customers that I deliver to that will come out and their kids will come out and greet me with these big smiles. And as soon as they see the big blue truck, they start running. In the summertime, I remember I was at this one house and I was getting, uh, I was delivering, the mom told me it was uh, swim shoes. And there was a little four-year-old girl and she was super excited. And she was like, mom, it's here, I can go swimming now. And it just made me smile, it brightened my day because I was having a bad day that day. And just to know that I made her day made my day, so. Part of the purpose of college is to help students get real world experiences before they enter the workforce. Tyler Melito joins us in studio with a look at a unique program at UK that's giving students a chance to learn more about the hospitality business. Think back to when you were in college. For many college kids, graduation requirements might have included writing a long research paper or a very arduous project. But for a group of students in the Department of Dietetics and Human Nutrition at UK, their requirement is a little more hands-on and a heck of a lot more delicious. For years, the Lemon Tree Restaurant at the University of Kentucky has been serving up quality meals to customers. But it's also a classroom experience most college students never get. It truly is a student driven restaurant. They are the ones delivering this from every single step along the way, whether that is, you know, the service itself or even our dishwashers in the back of the house, you know, they're making sure that we're able to do this in a manner that really upholds the standards and the expectations that our clients expect or our guests in the dining room expect. Throughout the course of the semester, students have the chance to get hands on experience in every role in the restaurant. For many, it's an eye-opening experience. I think the dishes, for sure, gives you more appreciation. How much work goes into just going out to eat, because when you're the customer, you think, oh, I'm gonna go get this. You know what cooking's like at home, but when you have to think of such a large production of food for so many people, you're like, oh wow, it takes a lot more time than you would have thought. In the kitchen, students learn from university chef in residence, Bob Perry, whose 25 years of experience help make sure things don't go up in flames. Chef Bob's great. He's very patient with us because like I said, a lot of us haven't really cooked before, especially for this many people. So having him always around and having his different experiences because he has a long list of diverse ones, I think really helps. And in the classroom, lecturer Emily DeWitt, who took the class herself while at UK, hopes to challenge the next generation of bright minds. I always tell them they have to work together to figure it out first. I'm certainly there to provide guidance, but my goal is to really help encourage them and challenge them to do this as if I'm not there. So they always have to figure it out with one another. And then if they get stuck, then they have to problem solve, and that's when they can turn to me. When the dust settles after each class and after every dish is cleaned, students say the feeling of accomplishment is like no other. I think getting to see the final product of when we actually get to serve it in there and having the customers have their pretty plates, and it's like, oh wow, a bunch of seniors in college made all this, it looks really good. 